what are some of the key challenges uh, that you all have faced in your respective field uh, during these trying times, right? Unprecedented is a word that we've never used since, uh, since we started. Krupa, do you want to start with that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, before I say anything, uh, thanks for hosting me here. It's, it's, it's an absolute honor uh, uh, to be talking to you all. Um, yeah, talking about uh, what we were hit last 2020 and um, the challenges that we faced, uh, I think the first challenge itself was this, you know, uh, me talking to a phone, me talking to a monitor, and, and I'm sure everyone's kind of uh, dabbled with that in the beginning. Um, after that, uh, it was all about work uh, in advertising, what what we um, have mostly experienced and what we have usually done is argue face to face, throw things at each other, uh, loud music, there's banter, brainstorming that happens, a bit of gossiping, there's a bit of all those things that happen. And everything was in person, right? We never thought we could ever do business without all those things. Uh, but yeah, given the situation, we had to kind of uh, uh, do something about it. So uh, yeah, while while we actually like spoke to computer, the spoke to the phone, um, and also uh, the other new thing that happened was being pally with a uh, broadband cable operator as such. So yeah, after all those things were done in the first few days, we got back to business. That's the beauty of it, you know. Uh, the meetings, shoots. We, we had not really done all of these things remotely, um, but we had to kind of figure a way around it. We had to do things remotely. Um, there were a uh, few instances before where we used to kind of interact with people, uh, whether it is an international campaign or a client who is away, we could kind of connect uh, over a call. But uh, the situation was such that none of us as a team, we couldn't really like figure things, but slowly we figured how to kind of dabble with these challenges. Uh, we had no time, we had to adapt. And yes, we did. And we continue doing all of it that we usually uh, were supposed to do or meant to do. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, we kept talking about a VUCA world before the VUCA world really happened, you know, VUCA for those of you, it's um, volatile, complex, ambiguous, um, you know, um, uncertain. uncertain. So everybody kept talking about the VUCA world and then suddenly the VUCA world was upon us. Um, I agree with uh, Krupa actually, there was so much that was happening and going on um, at that time that the transition took a, uh, a few days for us to get into, but I think uh, the new normal as everybody's calling it, or I would like to call it the new better, like uh, a lot of people are referring to it. I, I think the greatest challenges also bring out the best kind of learnings. We were going through a company transition. We were Anvati before we were switching to Aeon. So imagine doing a brand transition, <laughs> complete brand transition, including uh, signages and colors uh, no, sitting no. in a lockdown. So I think one of the biggest challenges was not having the physical space uh, to sort of go through this. Uh, but having said that, uh, the reality is we've managed to do all of it, uh, albeit virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of those uh, challenges that sort of struck us early on was the inability of the teams to actually coordinate in physical spaces. And, you know, sort of like uh, Kripa said, bounce off ideas with each other and, and also have social interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's, it's obviously common for everybody, whether it's colleges and students in colleges or whether it's uh, children yes. who are unable to go to schools. I think the uh, fatigue of, of screen time suddenly became the real thing. And for whatever reason, I'm, I, days have become 48 hours now, they're no more 24 hours. Um, so there is that challenge of actually trying to manage uh, people, their timelines, the mental health status of, of a lot of uh, people that we were working with at that time, this situation that a lot of the not-for-profits were going, you know, up against because there was just such a dearth of resources and people right. and volunteering. So the entire thing shifted and that shift, unfortunately, is still not stabilized. So mm. I would say the challenges continue, 
and uh, every day brings in a new set for you to sort of deal with in a different context and a different form um business as usual was not happening it's still not business as usual uh, empathy became very very important because you had to put things um before business and before revenue uh, so i think that shift automatically and naturally happened for a lot of brands so like i said the challenges were many but i think the learnings were also many and i think we're still on that curve of learning really right that was uh, interesting especially the piece that you brought out on the ngos uh, yeah. they are always at a dart of money and yeah. resources <clears throat> resources for corporates is probably a slightly easier shift to move yes. into accommodate digital quickly and yeah tamajit uh, at yeah. your end uh well on the organizational front you know we are one organization which couldn't have transferred to the online mode finally we had to run our trains on the tracks and we had Correct. to carry physical passengers to generate revenues so that was a major challenge on the public relations uh, front also there were uh, multiple challenges because you mm -hmm. know as a as a city based organization our uh, primary target audience uh, are the people of delhi ncr Right. and over the last many years we had uh, figured out that uh, our main uh, media through which we could reach more people effectively was the print media and not necessarily the television because uh, in television you for city based news you hardly get uh, screen time for a minute or a few seconds so mm. uh, while we were aware of the gradually declining impact of the print media but it was a kind of our communication strategy was a kind of a mix of the print and the digital we were pretty active on social media as well uh, but with the pandemic coming suddenly the print and uh, side was kind of dead you know that mm. uh, that process happened very fast and okay. uh, we used to organize a lot of these physical visits of the journalists to our locations and yes. there would be press releases we used to engage very regularly with the journalists all that uh, went for a toss overnight and we had to figure out ways as to how do we communicate and uh, you know uh, recalibrate our strategies based on the digital absolutely right. uh, this this apart you know also uh, dmrc was this dynamic uh, public sector organization seen as one of the most uh, you know best performing public sector organizations in the country we were uh, finishing projects before schedule we were having an impeccable operations record uh, some foreign head of state was coming and our prime minister was taking him on a ride on the metro so the last couple of uh, decades were so eventful that the lockdown happened and we shut shop and for the first 15 days honestly we didn't know what to do how to connect with our people how to you know continue with the brand building process we were we were kind of uh, clueless Right. and and eventually after 6 months when the services began again there mm -hmm. there the main challenge came because our passengers were not uh, ready to travel with the sops there were there was a graded opening and a very detailed sop was issued by the government there were mm -hmm. guidelines which needed to be followed and and in one of the meetings where all top people in the government our top management was there it it came down to a point where we were told that you know the success of a public transport system the resumption of a public transport system depends on how well you communicate the sops to the people because nobody would want the metro or the city bus system to become a super spreader of the virus right so so that was a massive challenge to actually drive home those messages as to mm. what what protocols people would have to follow right very interesting because uh, you know now this is fairly dramatically different from the piece that uh, krupa and shreya both brought out and you are in a unique space of public transport for instance and uh, public is really loath to come out so very interesting vishal what about you all at the real estate uh, world um shaneri so um i think you know the panelists have pretty much <laughs> covered all the points so you know it's going to be really difficult for me to really make a strong point here but uh, yes from a real estate uh, real estate perspective what i can say is that you know uh, and this is not just from real estate i think uh, you know in general uh, marketing itself i think underwent a shift in 2020 uh you know um uh, where suddenly uh, like you know uh, tomajit said all your traditional channels disappeared because you know people stopped uh, stepping out so there were no more outdoor there were no more print because newspapers were not being circulated um radio died because you know obviously you know your traffic uh, dropped so uh, i think everybody including brand managers you know uh, had to sort of start reskilling to you know adapt to digital 
because a lot of brands i think uh, uh, you know up until uh, you know 2020 were still relying on traditional media to sort of you know mm-hmm. uh, reach out to consumers and then to suddenly that entire you know uh, thing disappear channel disappear i think a lot of uh, brand managers had to sort of start reskilling to you know tackle uh, digital as a new uh, normal Right. starting 2020 uh, a lot of mainline agencies i know that you know they also started uh, upskilling and reskilling yes. um, you know their uh, staff to sort of start doing you know uh, digital projects which were you know sort of new to them so i think uh, from that perspective uh, even in real estate you know real estate works on a very micro market uh, you know uh, strategy right so um, we do not uh, look at pan india you know uh, reaching we just probably reach out to you know that city that we are operating and for us the biggest channels were always going to be outdoor the biggest channels were always mm. going to be radio it was always print right and then uh, we basically you know in, i think in a, in a uh, or two to three months we sort of completely shifted our strategies from that to sort of building an entire you know performance marketing digital marketing function within shobha mm-hmm. itself and um, you know that sort of got us through the rest of 2020 hmm. so i think that was the other big uh, you know challenge that uh, both marketers and agencies face was basically reskilling and upskilling you know existing uh, you know uh, people from the old traditional channels to the new normal which is digital right right so uh, interestingly i think you pretty much answered my second question also which was okay. uh, <laughs> which was not only what were the challenges but how did you all solve them but for yeah. real estate you know we've always seen these gigantic uh, 40 by 40 outdoor and all of that from that to uh, you know a tiny uh, phone screen um, uh, and therefore if that is the way that we've addressed the challenge is that and given the fact that it's continuing right it's not like the, it had an end date and the pandemic is over now life is going back to normal so has that changed the outcome that you were expecting in a way yeah so um, what i can do is nidhi i'll walk you through how we sort of made the shift at shobha right mm-hmm. um, so when the pandemic struck uh, even shobha at that point of time was going through an organizational transformation there was a new marketing team that was you know being put in place so when the new sort of cmo came over uh, you know obviously uh, he started taking shobha forward from the middle of the pandemic and uh, f- you know from from his direction it was very clear that you know we had to sort of move to digital we had to move to performance marketing mm. we had to move to social you know to sort of keep that conversation going with customers because um, like you just said right those holdings were no longer available um, obviously the space is there but nobody wants to advertise yes. there anymore yes. because people are not so what we did was quickly over a period of about 3 to 4 months we uh, put together a very robust team of about uh, 120 plus um you know um which included uh, you know designers which included performance marketers which included brand managers like me and we also had a very strong uh, pre sales function so uh, the entire framework you know that was basically supposed to sustain our business through the pandemic was put in place in about 2 months 2 to 3 months and uh, we completely moved budgets to you know uh, online uh, you know marketing so performance marketing took about uh, 80% to 85% of our budgets and the rest was you know then spent on uh, you know doing some activations or yeah. some you know offer driven communication and uh, to be honest it really worked wonders for us because you know um, if you look at our 2020 performance it's by far been one of the best wow so far so we have been able to sort of reach out to our consumers even you know though they are sitting at home uh, right. obviously through quickly sort of upskilling hiring new talent uh, you know uh, understanding the space that needs to be sort of uh, you know uh focused upon and uh, i think that's how we you know when i right. this so the power that digital wields you've actually seen it in action absolutely, absolutely. right yes, we yes. as uh, traditional marketers most of us on this panel we like to see large hoardings because it impacts the you know brand in a large way but yeah. the targeting that digital can do i guess uh, none of the traditional can do that is fabulous um uh, you know so uh, tomojit uh, what about you all uh, from from how you said that it was challenging for dmrc uh, what did you all do something specific to address these challenges yes absolutely as i as i uh, told earlier that you know our focus a lot of our focus uh, was on media relations and mm-hmm. was on generating stories through print media and of course the print media stories would also get into the online uh, platforms uh, but we had to completely replan our social media positioning uh, till the pandemic hit uh, our social media was primarily used for service updates or 
uh, things like those. Uh, mm. But now we started, you know, sharing a lot of our brand building things also. Like we uh, had a uh, custom, we still have it of doing press releases on Sundays because we believe that there is greater space uh, available for the journalists to right. you know, utilize. So now we started doing a lot of uh, the, those project progress and you know uh, issue uh, uh, topics which are of interest to readers. Mm -hmm. We started pitching those info directly through creatives on social media. We started mm -hmm. making a lot of audio visuals because we realized that audio visuals are of great help. We have made so many short films and put them on the digital platforms, uh, things which we hadn't done earlier. In fact, last December, uh, driverless operations were started and the, the whole event was uh, inaugurated by the prime minister and it was the entire thing was online. So uh, we, we made films and we generated a lot of buzz on social media. We have also tried to uh, present ourselves as a fun organization because a lot of these Sarkari organizations come across as boring and as conventional. So we focus a great deal on doing memes and uh, responding oh, to people in a, in a funny way because that has also helped uh, uh, helped a lot in uh, generating, you know, a positive buzz because the, uh, the media also tends to pick those items. Yes. I'll just give you an example. Uh, there was a, when we were resuming our services after the second lockdown, there was a guy who uh, asked us whether your trains are going to go to Noida because I need to meet my girlfriend this weekend, you know. So we, we replied with a meme of uh, Amrish Puri telling Fadal uh, Ja Jindayap is in the game. And this became viral and it was all over the place. How so we have, we have also tried to make our, uh, uh, you know, social media fun. So now a lot of our activities, uh, we make a lot of graphics. We did a press release on a bridge we are making over the river Yamuna. We made a very interesting graphic of that and that went viral. Right. So uh, like others, I guess the focus has been on doing more digital stuff than, than earlier. So that has right. been the way for me. Yeah. Very interesting. It will bring in young population also to your uh, yeah, social yeah. media channels, I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Shreya, what about you? These NGOs that you were working with, have they addressed these challenges, come out of it in some way? Um, yeah, actually what happened is the pandemic opened up multiple uh, collaboration points, mm -hmm. right? So what hadn't happened before, which was uh, different people working in different sectors were chasing those, you know, areas only. But when the pandemic hit, it mm -hmm. became do or die for everybody. And the minute people started posting, saying, looking for this, looking for this, I think what happened was not only with the NGOs, but also people who could help uh, suddenly came together. Like I had a, uh, my co-author who wrote, who I wrote Words Matter, Matter With, she started with 100 meals a day for migrant workers. Uh, it went on into 14,000 meals a day across three cities in, wow. in, a, in a gap of two weeks. Right. You know, so the kind of um, collaborations that opened up and she managed to get, you know, then we hired like an entire um, um, marriage month up for us to do the packaging of the uh, of the groceries that were coming nice. in. So yeah. from cooked food to groceries to... So what happened during this time is I think everybody stood up and sort of said, okay, let's help. Let's collaborate. So the lines were really blurring. There was no, this is my territory, your territory. Yeah. I think the humanity aspect, while of course we were struggling on so many other aspects. And you know what I really thought of, of not just the not-for-profits, but even the corporates kicked in, mm -hmm. in saying, you know, let's try and see what we can do. How do we collaborate? How do we fund? How do we... So I love how ESG in the last one and a half years has become such an important topic today mm -hmm. and how the focus is on environment, social and, uh, you know, governance and how... Right. It hadn't happened before the pandemic. Yes, and if it yes. weren't for the pandemic, it wouldn't have catapulted to the state that it is in. Right. So I think from perspective and point of view of actually seeing, um, you know, people get together to action change mm. and to action the ability to actually see <laughs> underground realities changing mm. and shifting. Mm. And the struggle was real. You know, mm. nobody knew what was going on. There was so much fear. There was right. fear of loss of lives. Um, you know, the, the organization that uh, one of the organizations I work with is a resort in Ibni called Kurg. Uh, mm -hmm. People's parents were calling them. We were ready to house them and say, you know, stay through the pandemic with us. 
but parents right. were calling them back home saying we don't know if we'll see you or not again right. you know, right. so that was the level of there was a lack of awareness there was fear right. also what happened was organizations coming and sort of creating awareness mm. uh, so you know there were influencer communities that came together and said we're only going to work on things relating to the pandemic and how we can help Mm. Uh, so you know from sari influencers to everybody they, they all came up with innovative ideas and ways and means of actually mm-hmm. outreach and programs and and the kind of coming together of these communities and the blurring of, of lines has been really enduring and i think it's very uh, encouraging to see that right. this happens right uh, and it happens on real time so. right actually i don't think there has been at least in our living lives uh, an incident or a thing that has united the world yes you know there is nothing that has happened in the past uh, we haven't lived through uh, 1918 spanish flu or any such thing uh, in fact i was chatting with my father the other day he says even and he's 80 and he says none of in his life also that has brought the world together True. you know which is why what you're saying about esg and every other challenge that we are facing or overcoming it has a um, empathy uh, that's resonating across yeah. the globe in a way you know um so another thing that uh, you know sort of while we are while we faced certain challenges and uh, to a large extent we have overcome or are overcoming these challenges really this situation seems never ending you know when we thought that the turn of the year uh come january you know uh, covid will go away but this new normal is uh, you know sort of become normal now right there is no new normal it's almost like this is what life is going to be so uh you know is there something that we are using strategically right now are you all using something which is uh you know sort of different from what you were doing in the early part of the pandemic you know when when in march april all of this happened we were uh, you know there was a knee jerk reaction almost because nobody had a history to anything right so is there something that you were doing in april may june even july that has changed now or is it you know continuation of that uh, shreya i am coming back to you <laughs> so we did something called uh, return to work right you're right there is now this is the new normal this is the the new future and the way the future is actually going to um gravitate towards is a lot of focus on hygiene is a lot of focus on because this is not apparently this is not the la- last virus that's going to cause this large right. scale devastation right. uh so one is of course consciousness and being aware and being um uh, aware of the kind of contribution that you're making both as a as an individual and as part of a larger community or a conglomerate that you're functioning in and in your multiple hats that you wear um everything that every single person does can impact and that impact can be positive or negative and you can choose what impact that is and what direction that impact is taking uh so one is of course consciousness and mindfulness of understanding and knowing where we are what is the impact of the space we're in and how can we in some form uh sort of push towards uh, push towards a future that's more cohesive that's more right. inclusive even in terms of healthcare right so we did uh, i think in the beginning there was a plethora of um, talks on wellness and health and uh, you know to the point of fatigue yes and uh, immunity doesn't come overnight it right is. it's something right. that you build on for yes. months so in terms of even communication changed uh, right. so i think what changed in the first three months like you said the knee jerk reactions which to a more let's look at this longer term let's look at helping people through through these times in a form and manner that's more sustainable that's more uh, collective and cohesive right and let's drive for something that we can all sort of shuffle towards which will help the larger community so whether it's the uh, hat at aon which i wear where we looked at marketing and where we looked at webinars and where we said let's slowly go from how do we get people back into work spaces how do we right. get mental health focus uh, you know and that conversation into the room because that became very important 3 months later one year later it's still you know right relative to understand mental health and what that means as organizations so doing that so all of these conversations came to the fore and they've all been and continuing on that journey of right. understanding awareness and actually pushing people towards asking the right questions really 
Yeah, um, so Nidhi, uh, I think one point that Shreya sort of touched upon was the fact that, you know, employee welfare now has come to the forefront, right? Um, now, obviously, companies are, become, you know, coming up with, uh, you know, um, more employee-friendly, you know, ways to work, not just that, but they're also putting health first for everybody right now. I know of so many uh, organizations that are, you know, are starting to call employees back to office spaces, but again, it's completely left up to, you know, the employees whether they want to come or not. Um, and uh, not just that, I know of organizations that have also provided employees with a lot of facilities for them to mm. sort of work comfortably at home. So I think that uh, seems to have come to the forefront, right? Employee welfare has uh, come up, uh, you know, as one uh, important talking point. The other thing from a work front, uh, again, like uh, for, for us, there was a lot of learning that we went through, you know, in 2020, right? Because once we sort of switched to digital and, you know, um, we started exploring that space, uh, as an organization, uh, we are we sort of realize that there's a lot that one can do uh, from a brand's perspective, right? Uh, so we started experimenting with things like AR and VR, which is something that we wouldn't have even thought of, uh, you know, to do in even for the next maybe couple of years. So that is a new space that we sort of operated in, and we 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 just saw the sort of impact it had with our customers. It helped really mm -hmm. sort of you know help build that uh, funnel that we you know we wanted. Uh, it gave that entire immersive experience. Now, customers didn't have to leave the comfort of their home to sort of come and see our projects, right? And that turned out to be a big success for most of the real estate brands, right? This whole year. Right. So I think, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's what we've sort of uh, adapted to and that's what we've learned, I think, uh, you know, uh, both uh, from a work perspective and also from an organization perspective. So a uh, um, couple of things about uh, advertising and how... Um, the challenges and how we overcame. I won't first go back to that. Sure. Bit, okay. The thing is, uh, when we initially started off, um, like I said, no, we were mostly in this in this space of meeting people, doing things yes. together, all those. And, Especially advertising, and now, no? It's yeah, like such it's, a it was team thing. Imaginable to be sitting by yourself in silos and trying to do something, but yes. yeah, we did. But uh, how did we do it? Yes, when everything shut. Uh, I've been hearing uh, Vishal Shreya, everyone talking about digital, but I'll cover that point a little later. Uh, but the most important thing that uh, as, an, as a community, mm. as uh, advertising professionals, what we realized is that little superpower that we all have, okay? That superpower, which we thought we never had, which is basically we could sit at our home in our own spaces and still manage business for our clients. Yes. And that was so beautiful. Uh, it is not easy. Mm -hmm. There was rigor. We had to put in a lot more effort. We had to expose ourselves to I mean, our own families. Imagine we are having a meeting and I'm presenting a script, telling the client that, hey, you know, there is a celebrity we want and then whatever. And then my dad comes up and says something. I said, dad, I'm in between a presentation. So like, yeah, sorry. And then I'm going back to the client and saying, you know, there's this dad and something. Hey, sorry, sorry. Like, I mean, right. these, are the, these are all realities. But the good thing is we all were, were in it together and everyone understood. Right. Uh, right. So therefore, it became a little easier. Uh, the superpower I'm talking about is not just about getting things done this way. We never thought a shoot, a photo shoot, or even a video or, or anything like a film or anything could be done remotely. Yes, yes. At DDB, we had our own studio, we had our own people, but everyone was scattered. Um, in the early days of the pandemic itself, um, I did one film where sitting in Bangalore, I had people in Bombay doing their bit. I had few people sitting in Chennai and us in Bangalore. So three places yes. coming together for one video to happen and it was possible yes. and and slowly over a period of time it gave us so much confidence mm. that for our clients business mm. for us to keep things going we could actually double up and think beyond our spaces yes yeah. it is difficult it won't be as good as what you what it can be or what it used to be but we managed we managed yeah. to keep things going and that was very very important right. um, so yeah the superpowers apart. After that, what we realize is how to keep our own team going, you know? Yes. I mean, like I said, we, we were mostly like meeting everyone together. We were brainstorming. Um, uh, and because there are students listening here, I, I would now uh, say a couple of things. One, when you're re working remotely or even like uh, studying remotely, have a rigor, have, have a kind of uh, a timing for yourself where you actually follow certain things so that 
um, you go back to the same thing every day and that becomes a practice otherwise it's not going to happen it is not about a lala time where we just kind of sit back and say that i will do things at my own pace no that is not how things will happen you need to have certain rigor you need to have a uh, a kind of a dedication to what you are doing only then you can make this thing possible coming to the uh, new ways of working yes right. with all those things that we have done uh, a beautiful thing that has emerged is a kind of a hybrid model which uh, where we know that yeah we don't have to necessarily come to office but yeah if we are away from office we still know that work can happen earlier i used to have this fear that hey if i take off if i am on a holiday this cool campaign that i'm part of or i have thought of won't happen without yes. me being there but today i know i can still be on a holiday and still manage work yes or i can still manage work and still think of going somewhere peacefully mm. that kind of a balance has happened now my dad doesn't walk in and say hey whatever he understands yeah there's a meeting <laughs> in place he doesn't have to quietly probably uh, chai comes up i still pe- peacefully like sip on it and those are the things that everyone's kind of empathize understood and right. kind of uh, lived through okay so right. therefore um, that has been a, a key take out uh, one point i would like to make sure. from what i said uh, shreya and vishal were actually like talking a little more about digital and because students are here listening to this this is a very very valid and key thing which i thought you guys should know uh when we speak about digital yes digital was a savior it is a savior when we had nowhere to go we banked on uh digital our clients had to kind of bank on digital but look at digital as an extension of uh what we have i'm not saying uh the traditional ways are the only ways to do it it is an extension it is how you use that extra ammo that that new toy that you have how you going to use it in the mix not every business can uh use digital media right now to actually like succeed um one example that i would want to give is uh, uh if you look at any of the uh, uh e-com giants that we have everyone banks on the traditional media mm. right you would see them scream their hearts out in front of a newspaper you see them run ads on tv why do they do it it's because everything feeds into the other it's about how as a marketer how as a uh, advertising professional you look at the mix and say what are the things that i'm going to do so that my product reaches the right kind of space uh my services reach uh, the right kind of people and how we actually like work it out with media specialist to understand what will be the right mix with the budgets that we have in mind digital doesn't mean uh, cheap films digital doesn't mean um, very very uh, what to say cost effective no everything is cost of it. it's about defining what what the spends that you have and then working out uh, a strategy around that right right while asking the question was that how the you know the communication strategies have changed over the last one year or so when the, when right. the pandemic started uh, you see when when we resumed services there was a gap of 169 days when the metro was stopped and then sometime in september 2020 we started again hmm. uh, the the passengers didn't know how to travel in this new normal scenario you know so hmm. we had to tell people that you have to queue up and you have to Uh, get thermal scan you have to sanitize your staff and then there will be some restriction in traveling you have to keep the alternate seat empty and all those things were there and we uh, did a lot of uh, audio visual stuff we organized walk throughs demonstrations and all those things to make people uh, understand and multiple media was used both mainstream and and digital but then we realized that in a month or two you know gradually uh, issues of uh, people not following those rules and regulations came so then now we had to start talking about how our, how our flying squads were roaming around and how they were going to penalize you if you don't follow 
the mm. rules and regulations and then came the issue of passenger fatigue i mean mm. there was a now there is a general fatigue against uh, you know the rules that we impose there is irritation there is frustration yes. we get a lot of flack on social media mm. for a lot of things that happen because uh, people are now pretty much tired of following those rules so now we are trying to uh, you know soothe nerves and uh, our social media campaigns are trying to be more funny and more you know a little bit of a little bit more humor but at the same time we are also trying to hammer in the messages again and again that the covid life right now we are running a campaign hashtag covid isn't over yet because uh, we just to remind people that covid is is uh, not over and they need to continue to follow the rules and regulations because mm. at the end of the day nobody wants the uh, the metro to stop services yet again so it has been very dynamic and things have been evolving gradually so the communication strategies and the things that we have been trying the messaging has has been continuously changing i would say over the last uh, one one and a half years and another thing that i would like to say you know uh, as i said initially uh, we realized that suddenly mainstream media didn't seem as effective as as it used to be and we had to move to the digital front and it it did seem a little daunting to to start with uh, but i must say it has been very empowering also as a communication team because uh you know for a very long time uh, as other pr professionals and students who are keen to take up pr or corporate communications would know that the success of your messaging finally depends on what the journalist takes from you how well you pitch your idea to the journalist how well you pitch your story to the journalist mm. but today in this digital era you yourself are the gatekeeper of the information so the 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 whole gatekeeping idea that the journalist is the gatekeeper of the uh, of the information has now gone away today i can release my own tweet i can do my make my own films i can give my own explanation say uh, even a couple of years back there was a negative story somewhere and we would write to the editor and send a strong rejoinder and the editor wouldn't bother about it today i'm going to just uh, put out a statement on so on social media and say that this story on this publication is incorrect and we uh, we uh, don't agree with it you know and right. uh, right. uh, some misreporting has happened or misrepresentation of facts has happened right so i think this is one new dimension that has come out as communication professionals as pr professionals uh, probably we are uh, we are far more empowered and far more uh, powerful today we can do our own stuff we can do our own communication today we don't really depend entirely on the journalistic with with all due regards to the media friends from the media if they are yeah. here <laughs> so that's a great thing that's a great realization that has happened right right very interesting that was a um, interesting uh, way to uh, move to the last uh, question and uh, i'm already being told that we've got 5 minutes left so quickly one minute to each one of you uh, we don't want to leave this uh, you know on this uh, semi pandemic y this thing so therefore what is your positive uh, take on this i'm hoping that this too shall pass and uh, we will get back to the old normal uh, tomojit since you uh, talked about something positive what is your sense of what's going to come in uh, you know sort of from a communication standpoint marketing standpoint in the next few months Yes, said, you know, uh, of course, everyone has said that digital is gradually taking over and all, but I, the gradually we will again go back to a situation where there will be a mix of the two, there will be a marriage of the two. So the mainstream uh, media as well as the digi- digital media are both going to stay. Uh, I guess the better part is that now we know how to handle the two and how to mix the two. We mm. we know better than ever before. Yes. So. Uh, say suddenly there is a disruption of this magnitude we really know how to deal with it right. so uh, if we have handled this pandemic and we have come out of it i guess we are now good enough to deal with anything so that's yes. the positive positive yes. part yeah. rupa what's your perspective on this yeah uh, i think uh, uh, we are on the same page the way tomoe just uh, mentioned uh, and what i was trying to say earlier uh, when we are all stuck digital stood out for us uh we kind of uh, uh leveraged uh most of what uh we stretched it you know we stretched as much as possible uh so that we all can stay afloat 
uh, and now that we are out of it and uh, we will we will eventually be uh, out of this entire uh, pandemic thing i'm sure so uh, once that happens i think we'll be back to regular business uh, but we with a with a focus on uh, a lot of people before uh, disregarded digital uh, now they know how to use it uh, it is just about uh, knowing this uh, this toy uh, this new ammo and 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 using it in the right way and uh, in the right mix so um, now we are mostly like talking about uh, digital specific out here therefore there is a bit of stress on uh, using digital and digital medium going forward uh, but again i would like to reiterate because there are students involved here for you to know uh, don't look at it as digital is the only way forward uh, it is it is in the mix you guys can choose a lot of different stuff be it be it tv uh, you guys know netflix uh, better than me uh, you know the new age content that is being developed on on those spaces uh, be it uh, radio be it anything else that you guys want to pursue uh, you should feel free uh, when you look at uh, advertising and communication as a way forward for yourself uh, uh, look at all of these things as uh, a mix that you can actually like uh, uh pursue um yeah and uh, i think uh from a brand perspective um i think uh, the right usage of uh the digital space uh has been somewhere kind of figured in these last one and a half years uh, and i think we are in a very exciting space i would say kripa is obviously a traditional media guy the love for traditional is coming out very strongly kripa <laughs> I, i wouldn't say it's the love for tradition but uh, it's it's about i mean again i'm saying it's because the students are involved yes. i don't want them to just look at the way forward as only digital because india as a nation the penetration that digital has and how many brands can sustain only digital yeah. uh, let me tell you one thing about myself now that you said uh, traditional medium 5 uh, years back ddb uh being a mainline agency we got onto this whole digital uh, bandwagon no now we had 22 feet as our uh, specific uh, uh digital uh, wing but we as mainline agency started to invest in digital uh, business itself for example me being uh, me working on uh, mainstream brands uh, me and my team was the first one in ddb bangalore to actually run a digital business successfully for one and a half years where the mainline agency was uh, leo burnett in in bombay but me being part of uh, a mainstream agency was running their digital business and that is something ddb uh, because we believed in in change and we uh, we kind of uh, uh, adapted to the changes early on uh we could actually like uh, deliver a good result and when the pandemic actually hit uh we didn't actually like had to do a lot of uh skilling up like we shall yeah. mention lot lot of skill up had to happen we didn't have to because it was already there in our dna we just went about doing business and uh, helping brands sorry yeah so um, i think um, you know somewhere we've already sort of uh, entered uh, you know um normalcy at least from a marketing perspective because i can say that because you know um, the freebies that i used to get with my print ads have stopped coming now mm. so you know um, that means uh, print is back in action i think all of august if you followed a specific uh, you know publication you would have seen that uh, the first three pages were always ads right so uh, i think we've already entered that uh, you know era of going back into you know uh, leveraging traditional media the way we used to and like um, you know uh, uh, Tomo just said it's going to come down to how uh, smartly we evaluate the mix that we are doing right. uh, between digital and traditional. Uh, for some brands, uh, you know, uh, like Shoba, for example, I think we can still sustain on digital for you know uh, for the coming year. Uh, we'll have to see after that. But right. there are brands uh, which you know um, I think uh, Krupa is a very strong advocate of. Uh, you know that uh, will never go beyond. I mean that will not uh, look at digital as a main. you know forte but will also you know, do do a lot of traditional so i think uh, we're already there nidhi uh, it's yeah. just a matter of time for all the brands come you know sort of jump back onto it
Um, I think nothing is unidimensional. There is no one pillar that's going to hold up everything. Uh, yes, it has yes. to be cohesive. It has to be collective. Reputation works with brand. Brand works with PR. <laughs> works with goodwill. Goodwill works with corporate responsibility. So this entire collective needs to come together. It's it's no more looking at anything unidimensionally. Uh, you know, you you need to look and explore at the various things that the pandemic has taught us. Like I said, the learnings are so many. Right. Actually, somewhere I don't want to go back to business as before because that's what brought us to where we are today. Uh -huh. I want us to take the learnings from business yes. as before, from the two years in the pandemic, and then move forward in a very conscious, sustainable um, manner, which is only going to make the world a lot more conscious and empathetic towards what the climate change impacts are. What you know, there's so much to business that we hadn't explored before that's coming to the fore now. Mm -hmm. And there is merit in changing. And there's merit in moving forwards towards the future by actually taking those learnings and implementing them. To me, social impact communications, I think, has undergone a sea change. Mm -hmm. And I see the way that's changing, you know, because of what we've been through. And that's very um, heartening as well. Right. Uh, so to me, I think, yeah, future holds a lot of promise. There is so much yeah. that's opening up because of what has happened. And I just think that the exciting times are here to come and stay. And yes. we will heal and we will heal together. Yes. On that positive note, a uh, quick thank you to all the panelists. I'm going to move to the questions. There are a fair number that have come in. Um, I'll just open it out to who I think is um, uh, the ideal person and the rest of you all can obviously uh, contribute to this. So the first question, probably Tamajit, you can answer. It says, with the shift from offline to online, how did it affect the reach of the audience in terms of PR? I, I think there was a significant difference because uh, obviously if I talk about my organization, we are a city-based organization and we cater to a cross-section of the population. So a lot of people who, uh, who would probably read a newspaper like uh, Punjab Kesri or a, or a Danik Jagran, uh, might not be very active on Twitter and uh, Instagram. So from the perspective of PR, when I talk about reaching my target audience, I guess uh, there was a significant difference and that's where the issue of going back to the traditional and make and creating some kind of a balance between the two comes in because uh, there, uh, as uh, Kripa said, there are still people who probably do not have access to digital uh, and uh, therefore we whatever communication strategies we make, we have to ensure that there is a mix of it. So once we shifted to digital and we realized that people were not subscribing to newspapers the way they were used to, uh, of course, we, we there was a very big, uh, there was a certain age bracket, I would say, the vernacular uh, press reading population, they were not getting access to a lot of information like before. So this is open to everyone really, but maybe Vishal, you can take a shot at it. It says, did the pandemic, uh, and I suppose the entire discussion has been around this, did the pandemic compel PR practitioners, brand managers and advertisers to improve their operations in the online platforms? Yeah, um, absolutely, uh, Midi. I think um, that is something, like I told you, um, um, Shobha, uh, you know, as an organization went through, you know, um, a, a massive shift in the way we operated through the pandemic. Right. And uh, our biggest strength was to sort of put together this, you know, uh, robust team of performance, performance marketers, you know, uh, designers, content writers, you know, and also the pre-sales function to sort of help us build this uh, framework that will, uh, you know, sustain our entire, uh, you know, uh, marketing calendar. And we've been completely digital um, since, uh, you know, March 2020. Right. Uh, and I've already mentioned that we've got, we, we came out through, you know, we came out doing a fabulous year. Uh, and we're looking at you know sustaining that momentum uh, in 2021 as well. So yes, I fully agree that uh, I mean maybe at some level some brands were compelled because they had to keep the communication going. Uh, but for us also it was a matter of choice. So we decided to switch to digital. Right, company. right. Thank you, uh, Kripa. This is to you. It says, did some brands start withdrawing their advertising contracts due to losses in sales during the pandemic? How much did it, that impact the agency? Oh yeah, uh, it already like gave me shivers hearing this because those were realities. And uh, uh, yes, there were a lot of lot of brands that pulled out. 
a uh, lot of business that didn't do well we are still in a seesaw kind of a, a situation with certain clients but mm-hmm. uh, uh, and yeah uh, like we we stopped going out right we were all stuck at home so how many of us went out and bought uh, something new in fashion we didn't how many of us went out for parties we didn't go Uh, there was no place to go so what happened to all those clothes that were in those showrooms and what happens to all the brands that was out there i mean they all tanked and those are the businesses that that got affected first and uh, uh, when business gets affected uh, what do they, what do they uh, do they just call the agency first and say that hey you know uh, business not happening and uh, we need to do something about it at that time uh, when lot of clients um, said that yeah we might stop working or we may not be like in business for some time mm-hmm. uh, what we did mostly and i think lot of agencies also did was to partner with them and and sustain them as much as possible yes we took a pay cut we uh, we did struggle with our own salaries to whatever but in the larger interest we also partnered those clients we said that yeah it's okay right now the times are such we will do whatever that's possible for you mm. to keep things afloat uh, kind of remodel things reshape things and kind of even if it is a, a sale ad that had to be like put out on digital we did it free for them even though we were mainline agency doing mainline stuff for them before we doubled up as being a, a good support a good partner who could do whatever that was possible so that they could kind of slowly uh, come back few failed few went flat but a lot of people uh, kind of stuck together and right now i can say that everyone's kind of looking up everyone's kind of staying positive that yes thank you guys you guys at least like helped out and i think a lot of newer bonds have been built between agencies and agency partners because of this pandemic they have seen uh, how one could actually help the other get past this whole phase and uh, yeah that's how it has been right shreya perhaps you can take this uh, what is your best piece of advice for freshers who want to pursue a career in either advertising pr or copcom especially in the post pandemic era um i do remember that you know we were discussing this in the pre pre meet uh, pr uh, advertising all of this seems very very glamorous uh, on the outside right because you're thinking that it's very exciting work it's aesthetics it's interesting celebrity lineups uh, so there's this entire persona around it uh, let me just you know bust that myth that's perhaps 2% of what you actually get to do uh, there's a lot of hard work grunge work learning work reading work it's like doctors for marketing and communications and pr professionals you need to be abreast you need to be ahead of the curve but i think fundamentally it's only two things that anybody is looking for when they are hiring it's the right kind of attitude to be able to grow and learn and move with the organization absorb things that are part of the organization and the ap- the attitude and the aptitude i think beyond these two things if you have the right attitude and you have the aptitude to go with the flow and understand and grow and be valuable and find spaces of leadership and own your space and own your voice and be yourself organizations today are becoming very very inclusive they are telling you to bring your full self to work uh, so i don't really have advice all i have is to say is to be open to experiences and open to working you know i get so i teach as well and so many students are saying we are burning out and we don't have understand that it's tough times but the ones that are resilient are the ones that will see the times change and grow Uh, so you know stick through it live through it and then there's always thriving at the end of survival mode get past the survival mode to thriving mode true, true. Uh, vishal you mentioned something about taking on ar pr and all of that so i'm posing this question to you it says technology is an ever changing uh, phenomena uh, did the pandemic act as some kind of a wake up call that we always need to familiarize uh, familiarize ourselves in both spaces in the online as well as the offline space absolutely nidhi um, and again i can give you uh, you know a case in point from you know uh, real estate itself right um, so traditionally if you look at how a home is purchased or, or, or how a buyer goes about purchasing a home is that you know uh, he or she first uh, you know uh, does a little bit of a research online uh, you know in terms of okay, what are those pro- uh, properties that they, they want to pick up and then they sort of narrow down maybe two or three 
and then they want to do a physical visit because they want to go there see the place see the location you know, see how the you know the, the model apartment looks and then sort of decide ki, okay now i can take this forward you know this is going to be my home what happened in the pandemic was that completely stopped for us and that for us is a very critical point in terms of sale conversion because unless and until somebody experiences your home no, they don't buy so we had to figure out a way of making this uh, experience still happen uh, you know uh, even though you know people are not comfortable stepping out of their homes and that's where we uh, you know started leveraging ar and vr so what we did was we had all our marketing offices uh, our marketing sites ready where we had these model apartments so we engaged a third party agency to go there and create these 360 virtual tours of all of these properties and what we started doing was we started uh, pushing them out through our performance marketing campaign we started pushing them out through our website seo and all of that so people who uh, were interested in our property actually got to experience the property firsthand right from the comfort of their home. So they they had to just sort of click onto a link. The link would launch this virtual tour. And it was as good as, you know, they were actually at the site and they were walking through the apartment. And what that helped was that helped accelerate sales uh, conversations with our uh, sales uh, teams, because then the customer was already fully aware of what they were buying. And all the salesperson had to do was talk about, you know, the missing features that we couldn't sort of list down at in the virtual tour. So nice. uh, absolutely, I think um, AR, VR is something that uh, opened new avenues for us in terms of how we do marketing, uh, you know, through digital. So definitely, I think it's something that yeah. we have to talk about. I also think, I think it's a technology, uh, understanding of technology or interviewing that in a part of your marketing uh, mix, I think huge wake up call to all us marketeers really. No? Absolutely. You yes. can't leave it behind and move forward. You cannot do. Okay. I would like to add uh, sure. something here, uh, just to add to what Vishal was saying, and it's it's actually a a, a very good question. Um, while we spoke, uh, while we actually like spoke about traditional medium and digital at a larger level, uh, technology has uh, a kind of uh, added uh, 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 another edge to uh, digital itself. You uh, you know. So therefore, uh, all of you guys who are actually like looking at uh, pursuing uh, your interest, whether it's digital, whether it's advertising, PR, journalism, anything, um, have this uh, eye for technology going forward because with technology, a lot of other new things are going to kind of emerge, mm -hmm. which is going to be uh, possible tools for, uh, for us to engage with, brands to engage with. So it's going to be very, very exciting. So who has asked this question about technology being in the mix? Uh, I think that's that's a, a very, very good question at this point in time. Right. Another one I'm sending your way, Krupa, also an interesting question. It says, amid the pandemic, the global consumer sentiment towards brand right. communication, how skeptical were brands to the changes that we all were recommending? And how did you really convince them uh, you know, sort of to, uh, while you as individuals were figuring out the new functionality, how did we also then convince the brands to move in this direction? I mean, uh, funny thing, what are these brands? These brands for me are people. Mm. <laughs> so it's about convincing each other. I mean, yes. We consume these brands and brands is not something which is by itself, right? It is yes. something that we buy for ourselves. We sell it for others. It's for somebody's consumption, whether it's service, whether it's a product, anything. So uh, it was mostly about understanding what we are going through and how we can actually reach out and, and be available to uh, uh, people in this kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. It was about kind of stepping back a little and repackaging ourselves to the need. And then uh, now that need may not be there anymore because I think we are slightly getting out of it. But yes, when it hit us, uh, we did have to kind of take that step back, repackage and right. go back to people. Right. I think we have time for just one question quickly. Uh, and uh, I don't know, Tomajit, do you want to answer this? Do you think the occurrence of a hopefully not, but third wave, uh, will put print media back in jeopardy? We have journalists, journalists, journalists sitting over here. <laughs> I, I think that's a very, you know, obvious reaction. If, if God forbid the third wave hits us, the immediate reaction is to <laughs> stop our mates from entering our houses and yes. stop that. Amazon guy from uh, coming beyond the society gate and of right. course stop subscribing the newspaper. 
Yeah. So this is the first reaction we have. So uh, many of us have not even resumed our subscriptions uh, of newspapers. I know yeah. many people who are still not reading the newspapers. Uh, in fact, newspapers were going out of fashion uh, even before maybe, even before the pandemic. I mean, uh, in fact, I was talking to a few students in Farabay, Sikkim, uh, in 2019, and they very nonchalantly told me, "Sir, we don't read newspapers. We have nothing to do with them." So I was very surprised then. But I think now the pandemic has increased that population many folks. So God forbid the third wave comes, I think it is going to be very, very difficult for the right, pandemic. Right, right. Yeah. I must say I'm one of those people who didn't stop it for even a single day. I sit with my morning cup of tea and newspaper and a sanitizer, but I read my newspaper physical every single day. So yeah, I can't start my day without. Thank you, Nidhi. I think I think I can still look forward to the Bailpuri in a newspaper. <laughs> Thanks to people like me. <laughs> That's all we have time for, folks, today. Thank you so much. I I think it was uh, very good for me to hear all these interesting and fairly diverse views. I hope the students also had a had a good time. Yeah, uh, a Saturday well spent. I think. Yeah. Thank you so much.